Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to Artful Manifesting. Today, I am sharing with you how to decipher messages from birds or other animals from your ancestors. Thank you, Kathy, for asking this question. I drew a card for you, and what I received from the Spirit Animal Oracle deck is the Porcupine Spirit. Now that may seem unusual considering there are a number of birds in this deck, but the message is clear. Time for beginner mind. So what your ancestors want you to know is that if you are open and curious, inquisitive, explorative, innocent like a child, playful, that is when you will be most open and receptive to receiving this message. And I just saw a black bird fly by my window as confirmation for this. How wonderful. What's interesting about this card is we see feathers hanging from the porcupine's quills. So that tells me that one way you are receiving messages is through feathers. I'm going to be sharing with you multiple ways to decipher these messages as there may be multiple people interested in this subject and we're all different. We all receive information in different ways. Some of us receive information as a download. We just know something somehow. Some of us hear things in our mind or externally. Some of us see things that other people may not see or notice. And some of us feel things. So keep all of that in mind. When you see a bird and you feel strongly that it is communicating a message to you from spirit, notice uh, what you're thinking about, how you're feeling when you see that bird. But the first way that I want to share with you is about feathers. Since we see feathers on this porcupine card, when you come across a feather uh, walking or one floats down in front of you, that could be a message from your ancestors. And one way to discover the meaning of what you're trying to receive from ancestors is to explore that feather. And what I mean by that is if, you, if you're interested in learning about new things, you can, there are apps or you can Google, you know, how to identify what bird a particular feather comes from. And then you can look up what are the uh, symbolic meanings of that bird. And you can also research what behaviors does that bird exhibit? What, you know, what kind of tree or bush does it live in? What are its nesting habits, mating habits? How many eggs does it lay? Learning about its cycles, behaviors, those kinds of things will give you a clue as to what the ancestors are that bird is trying to communicate to you. If researching an animal seems like work to you, it doesn't sound fun, then that's not the way for you to learn or receive your message because Remember, we are connecting our inner child, our spiritual child, to this animal or ancestor in order to receive this message. And if it feels like a chore, if it feels like work, then that's not your inner child. You want to use the method that seems the most fun and exciting to you. So feathers is the first way. The second way would be to notice the bird if you see the actual bird notice what is that bird doing at the time that you see it is that bird searching for food is the bird building a nest or do you see it in flight 
if it's flying, how is it flying? Is it just soaring, kind of riding the currents of the wind? Does it look like it's just enjoying the air or does it look focused as if it's focused on a specific target? Is it flapping its wings, working very hard? All of that may give you clues into what the message is. And you can also just in your mind ask what that bird's message is for you or what your ancestor's message is for you in your mind. And then just wait for whatever pops up in your mind or wait to be shown by the bird's behavior. Again, it's going to be different for everyone because everyone has a different way of receiving messages. And another method that I'd like to share with you is a method that I learned from Lucia Capicchione in receiving my certification in Creative Journal Expressive Arts. She is no longer with us. She's passed the spirit realm. But you can still pursue this if you find that this method for you is helpful and you'd like to explore it more. I will put a link in the description box below to give you access to that. All right, so for this, what you will need is blank paper. It doesn't have to be in a sketchbook. It can be paper from the copier or printer, just paper with outlines on it. And the reason is we're gonna be writing with both our dominant and non-dominant hand. And if you're not accustomed to writing with your non-dominant hand, then trying to write on a line could prove challenging and we don't want to awaken the inner critic. We want to focus on the inner child. So not having lines is going to help us stay in our inner child mode and not in our judgmental critical mode. The next thing you want to do is give yourself choices. Children like choices. And just like, you know, deciding which method works best for you and maybe try all of them before you decide. Uh, but, you know, using what seems fun and exciting for you is how you're going to choose what you want to draw and write with. So if that's crayons, then use crayons. If it's colored pencils, use colored pencils. If it's scented markers or ballpoint pens, charcoal, whatever seems most thrilling and exciting to you, that's your inner child's voice uh, proclaiming what they would most likely want to use. So to begin, I am going to first sketch a picture of Hawk and I'm going to let my non-dominant hand choose what to draw with. The non-dominant hand may choose a color that doesn't match the color of the animal, and that's fine. If you find um, that after it chooses a color that this part of your mind speaks up and says, that's not the color of your birds, that's the inner critic. And just tell it to please wait outside during this activity. Now we're not trying to draw a work of art. We're simply connecting our inner child to the spirit of that animal or our ancestor. So don't worry too much about what it looks like. And that's the other benefit of using our non-dominant hand. When we use our non-dominant hand, we have less, less expectations if you struggle with perfectionism and we can just allow it to express itself like a child drawing for the first time. Now, it, you can draw this image very big or you can draw it small. There's no right or wrong. If it's easier to draw it big, you can do that. Remember not to judge it. It's just a symbol of that bird or animal. 
All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna have a conversation with this bird or ancestor, whoever it is that you are connecting to. And to do this, we're going to converse using both our hands. We're, again, we're gonna let each hand choose which instrument it wants to write with. So once you've made that choice, then we're gonna begin our conversation. The way this is gonna work is I'm going to use my dominant hand to ask questions to Hawk, Hawk spirit or the ancestors speaking through Hawk. Uh, I give you all three choices depending on the circumstance. If you feel like it is a message from your ancestors, then of course you're having a conversation with your ancestors. If you feel like you are just connecting with the spirit of that particular bird or animal, then that's who your conversation is with. The questions are written down with your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand writes the answers. Your non-dominant hand channels the answers for that spirit, for that animal, for that ancestor. You can ask, you can make up your own questions. Uh, I'm gonna show you some questions that you're welcome to use. Maybe try using these the first time and if you have additional questions, you can ask those afterwards. The more you practice this, you may start to come up with your own questions. And if you do, please share them. The first question is, who are you? If you go to put down your pen with your non-dominant hand and nothing comes to mind, then just start the sentence with how you would start a complete sentence to answer this question. So the question is, who are you? I am. And writing those first two words kind of helps to prime the pump and you will come up with an answer. Don't judge the answer. You know, if something odd comes out like pizza or <laughs> a very modern name, just go with it. Just think of this as practice and the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. The next question is, why are you here? And again, if nothing comes to mind, start the sentence, the answer with I am here because, and then just let the rest of the answer flow out. The third question is, what message do you have for me? Now, by this point, you may just feel like you can write. It doesn't have to be in complete sentences. Don't worry about spelling. Or if you need to employ the same method of beginning the sentence with, you know, my message for you is, and then whatever comes out, that's the right answer. There's no wrong way to do this. The fourth question is, what else would you like me to know? And then again, if you need to, you can start your sentence with, I would like you to know, and then whatever comes out, comes out. Once you've written all of your questions and answers, and make sure that you're answering each question 
immediately right after you write it, like I did, rather than writing all the questions first and going back and answering. Once you've done all of that, go back and read your answers. And if you can, read them out loud so that you're saying it and hearing it. And as you hear your words, you may pick up on a, on a deeper meaning and you can go ahead and write that down as well. It's a good idea to date your journal entry so that you can go back later and see what day it was you received that message if it pertains to something that happens later on. If you feel like you want more information uh, to clarify an answer that you got, then feel free to ask more questions. Remember, you can make up your own questions. So one example might be, what did you mean by that? Or, you know, what did you mean by fill in the blank, whatever it is you're exploring. So that's another method. I hope you enjoy using that one. And lastly, I want to mention dreams. So when you are laying in bed and you're falling asleep, rather than falling asleep watching TV or worrying about what you need to do the next day or thinking about what you didn't get done. Connect to your ancestors or the animal spirit that you saw, observed, felt strongly where you were receiving a message from and ask, what is my message? What are you trying to tell me? What is Hawk trying to tell me? What is Blackbird trying to tell me? What are my ancestors trying to tell me? And notice what you dream about. When you wake up, if you can, write down uh, as much as you can about your dreams and also read it out loud because as you read it out loud, you will hear things that will give you clues as to the symbolism of that message. So those are the different ways that you can decipher messages from birds, other animals, and your ancestors. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for the question. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Have a beautiful day. Bye.